What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're chasing it up with you guys today. I'm bringing you guys Arm Dragon, not just any Arm Dragon build, but an OTK build of Arm Dragon. And I think this deck is so powerful because it can fit so many cards that can break pretty much any board in today's format. Now, just before we get into the deck profile, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't guys already, because we do upload five days a week on the channel. We do a full 10 videos per week, five long videos, five short videos deck profiles, dual replays, all of that good stuff, you'll find it right here on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get into today's video, I do want to say this side deck that you guys are seeing over here is something that I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video. This is not a side deck that you guys are going to be building. These are just some side deck options for you guys. Okay, and again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's get started with today's deck profile. We are starting off with three Arm Dragon Thunder level three, three level five, three level seven, as well as one level 10. Now, I think these are the best ratios. You really need to open up at least one to two of these names because they all kind of have the same effect where they level up. You can send this card in a monster you from your hand to the graveyard so that you can level up, right? So that's how they all work. And level three, of course, is the normal summon of the deck because otherwise you can't be normal summoning your level five or your level seven. They all have obviously really relevant effects as well. Level five lets you add a level seven or lower arm dragon monster from your deck to your hand. So you can add another five, a seven or a three. And then level seven has a really cool effect where you can add any arm dragon card from your deck to your hand okay so that's kind of your searches for the deck and then arm dragon level 10 is just your big boss monster for the deck you just really want to be playing one you don't want to open this you'd want this in your deck you want to be getting this out later on in the game honestly this is an otk build of the deck so there's going to be a lot of times where you're ending on a level 10 just to help push for more damage but of course this card is very powerful you have to be playing the one of and then lastly you're playing one of the most important cards if not the most important card of the deck we're playing three pile arm dragon pile arm dragon is probably one of the best starters in your deck all you got to do is send a a winged dragon monster or another level seven or higher dragon monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon it and then you can send an arm dragon monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard as cost by the way so keep that in mind so it's not like this card can be ash right and then you can target a monster you control it gains attack but the gaining attack part is not the important part the important part about this is that you're able to send some of your names you're able to send this card over here tempest which is really really powerful and it can help you extend a lot of your plays so pile arm dragon of course is really powerful and again it being able to gain attack can also help you otk if you needed to so there's just so many things that this card does and it's just so powerful you need to be playing this card because this card is absolutely insane and then lastly we're playing three arm dragon flash which is just an e-telly for the deck as well as one arm dragon lightning this card is kind of like protection for you which is really nice and then the other effect is just to be able to recur cards from your graveyard which is really nice so this is the arm dragon lineup that we're playing i'm counting pile arm dragon as arm dragon so we're counting all of these cards this is the arm dragon stuff and then we're playing three of the bombarding catapult turtle your arm dragon level three is very important of course to start off your plays but if you don't open this the next best normal summon in the deck is your catapult turtle if not this might be the best normal summon of the deck because this can get you into your level five right away so it kind of lets you skip a step of having to go into level three first so that's why i really like this card i think you need to be playing three of this card and it's kind of like an honorary arm dragon and then lastly we're playing the one tempest of course extender for the deck this card is absolutely insane i wish this card comes back to more than one because if it comes back to more than one this deck is absolutely crazy but for now we only have the one so we're gonna have to be playing the one so that's it for your dragons your arm dragons as well as your catapult turtles which is kind of like an arm dragon in this deck and then for the spell cards we are playing three return of the dragon lords this is a monster reborn for your deck also protection while it's in the graveyard so that's why we got to be playing three three extravagance i like extravagance over prosperity because drawing two is really powerful in this deck also you don't really need the extra deck so much with this so it's really nice in that sense and also you really want to be able to otk so prosperity makes it so that you can't really otk so extravagance is really good because it does provide you with that consistency and it doesn't take away from your ability to otk which is really nice and then lastly we have to be playing the board breaker cards the anti-meta cards so that we can actually OTK our opponent, break their boards, and then go for game. So to do that, we're playing three Raigeki over here. Now I will say with Raigeki, I really like Raigeki, but I understand that Nightmare Corruptor Ibli is a real thing. So for that reason, if you guys wanted to play Dark Hole in the main deck rather than Raigeki, that is an option for you. I think Raigeki is just a little bit better because I've noticed that Ibli has kind of fallen off in terms of popularity. So for that reason, I think Raigeki is okay to play right now. I don't think you need to be playing Dark Hole, even though Dark Hole, of course, is really important for a lot of reasons. But I think Raigeki you can get away with it you can play with dark hole if you want doesn't really change up too much the only thing about regeki that i do like is that if you nibiru your opponent at least you get the nibiru body on your board and then you can regeki your opponent's board and then you can try to push for damage it gives you more bodies so that's just another reason why i kind of like regeki a little bit more also if you don't end up otking your opponent and you end up going into turn four turn five and you top deck at regeki that could swing the tide of the duel versus if you top deck at dark hole yes it's still really good but if you're getting rid of your own board it makes it so that it's tougher now to otk right so 
So that's kind of why I like the Rengeki a little bit more. Uh, it's really up to you though. You can play Dark Hole if you want. And then we're also playing, of course, 3 Nibiru. Like I said, this card is very popular in today's format. It's very important to be playing. So I like the 3 Nibiru. 3 Ash and 3 Imperm, just generic hand traps that are really just good into every deck. Flandry, Sprite, like forget Kostra, right? Because we all know Kostra is one of the best decks, but Branded, Flandry, Sprite, all of these meta decks uh, all get hit by Ash and Imperm. And I think other than Sprite and Flu, Nibiru is also really good into everything else. So that's why these are just generic hand traps that you need to be playing in today's format. And then we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster to round off the 40 card main deck. I just think it's important to have some kind of back row hate in the main deck. You're always going to be siding more back row hate, but I like having the one Harpy's just in the main that because having it is always just really good you you sometimes see it and you're like wow i'm so happy i'm playing this right so that's why i really like the one harpy's feather duster rounding off our 40 card main deck over here again very consistent deck that you're playing three of all the names that you need to be seeing and then you're playing extravagance so that if you don't see any of the names for some reason you can then see the names which is really nice and then also extravagance helps you because sometimes if you are going second being able to extra right away and then starting your turn off with like a regeki let's say if you draw into that or an imperm so that you can break an opponent's board with an imperm all these things can really add up and that's why i really like playing this deck the way it's played right now the way it's built is very very consistent so moving on to our extra deck over here we are playing three hieratic seal this is kind of the best card when you're forced to go first making this is really nice it is a form of disruption for you then we're playing one ip mascarina one unicorn one access code talker these are just utility cards again you don't go into them too often and again that's why i like to play extrav because most of this extra deck outside of like two or three cards you're really never going into right so hieratic seal is probably the one that you're going into the most especially when you're going first then then for the Ixies monsters, we're playing the three Odd Eyes Rebellion as well as three Odd Eyes Rebellion Overlord. This is like an OTK package for you. And again, this is why we're playing three and three because when you do go into the extra deck, this is the thing that you're going to be going into the most to help you push for game. And then Seals is the thing you're going to be going into the most to help you just set up a board if you don't end up OTKing, right? So that's why we're playing three Seals and that's why we're playing three Rebellion as well as three Overlord because this is your OTK package. So you have an OTK package maxed out, you have your disruption package maxed out, and everything else is just utility, really, right? So that's why we're playing three and three. Then we're playing one red eyes flare metal one of the dark armed as well as one zeus now if your opponent rips this out if you're playing against karstar and they rip it out of your extra deck it doesn't really matter that much i'm gonna be honest with you it really doesn't red eyes flare is just kind of nice to have sometimes because if you don't actually end up otking your opponent sometimes you could just like make the red eyes flare metal if they're end on like a thousand life points or something like that and you're like okay what are you gonna do now right so that's why red eyes flare i think i like playing at one because it just does become really powerful when you just push for a ton of damage but not enough for game red eyes is there to essentially help you win the game right so that's why i like playing the one and that's it for the extra deck all of the cards that you're maxing out on are the cards that you really need the other cards are all just utility cards right so now the side deck i want to talk about this just a little bit there's a lot of different options you guys can play in this side deck and again your side deck should always be built based off of the locals that you go to so if your locals is a lot of kashtara players make sure your side deck is built to be kashtara if your locals is a ton of rogue players back row players like labyrinth or altergeist or any of those trap based decks then you want to be able to build your side deck to beat those decks so just always keep that in mind but i'm just going to give you guys some really cool options here in the side deck i really like kwaki Mero drago as well as a morphage sloth when you are forced to go first if your opponent makes you go first these cards are really powerful because you can go hieratic seals bounce a card and then you're going to be able to summon either a draco or a sloth which means you're locking them out of the extra deck now which is really nice draco has fallen off a little bit i will say because tier limits and a lot of those dark based decks or light based decks aren't around as much now so maybe draco is something that you don't want to play in today's format but it is an option for you always in different formats now another thing that i really like if you're not going into sloth or you're going to drago is aether the evil empowering dragon this card is another card that you can go off of the hieratic seal and it becomes really powerful because if you go hieratic seal into this this card when it's special summoned gets to banish a monster that your opponent controls so it's really nice because if you go seal seal you can bounce and then if they have another monster on their side of the field you can summon the aether aether will then banish that card so it's kind of like two disruptions in one which is really nice so this is just another seals target for you i really like the idea of kaijus in this deck now you don't have to be playing the wind kaiju i know all of these cards are wind but you don't really don't need to be playing the wind kaiju but kaijus are really good in today's format of course you guys can play lava golem i don't have it here but lava golem sphere mode are really important as well i mean the thing is with this deck is you do have access to an e-telly so you can kind of afford to play lava golem even if you give up your normal summon you can still kind of play around the normal summon especially with pile arm dragon as well so you you guys can play lava golem or sphere mode as well here i spoke about dark hole already so there's that book of eclipse is really good going second into kashtar 
Sakura. So this is another option for you. Lightning Storm, of course, is really good into any back row matchups, front row matchups as well, but it's really good into back row matchups. Same thing with Hey Trunade. I know Hey Trunade is really, really powerful into the Trap Tricks matchup. And if your locals is filled with a lot of Trap Tricks player, this card can be really powerful as well. If you resolve this against a Trap Tricks player and you have even like a half decent hand, you're more than likely OTKing your opponent. So that's why I think Hey Trunade, Lightning Storm, all these back row hate cards are really important. And then lastly, we're playing Rivalry or just something you can play, I guess I should say, is Rivalry because all of your monsters are dragons essentially and all the monsters you go into the extra deck are going to be dragon. So it's really nice to be able to play Rivalry. It's one of those things where if your opponent forces you to go first, you can actually set this up with your board and it's still really powerful in that sense. So Rivalry is a good option. You can technically play Gozen. Gozen locks you out of your extra deck, but if you think about it, all of your main deck monsters are win that you really need to be going into. So for that reason, if you think there's matchups where Gozen just auto wins you the matchup, you guys can play Gozen and just, you know, give away your, you don't need your extra deck a lot of the time. So that's just another option. But yeah, again, all of these side deck cards here are just options that you guys can play. I really just wanted to give you guys a lot of different ideas for your side deck. But for the main deck here, I think this main deck is super, super consistent. And I think you guys should try it out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on Arm Dragon for today's format. Guys, I'm so excited because I think this deck is really, really powerful. And I think it's really cool to play, especially at a casual level, but being able to take it competitively with all the cards to help break boards in today's format. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we do a full 10 videos per week. Five long videos, five short videos, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all of that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, thank you. Signing out. Peace.